This week, the top Disney news stories include really a whole bunch of promotions for Disney executives and a bunch of updates on Disney parks. There are also stories about Disney Plus and a new baby animal over at Animal Kingdom. Stay tuned, and I'll break it all down. Well, hello there. My name is Jeremy and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, and the TV shows, and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now it's that time of the week once more, so on to this week's biggest Disney news stories. Our top story for this week is the set of announcements about new Disney executives. Now, we've been expecting some announcements for a while, considering that Bob Chapek, who's now CEO of Disney, left the former position of Disney Parks Experiences and Products Chairman. So we've been expecting someone to take that spot. But we also got the announcement this week that guess what? Someone else is vacating a position too. Kevin Mayer? He's out of here. He's now the new CEO of TikTok. Now, he used to be the former chairman of the Direct-to-Consumer and International, which many people associate especially with Disney+, Plus. although that also means ESPN+, Plus, Hulu, and some different marketing pieces. It, it means a whole bunch. Now, many people had expected Kevin Mayer was the frontrunner to become CEO, but instead Bob Chapek got that position. Now, if that doesn't have a lot to do with why Kevin Mayer is now gone, I would be surprised. At any rate, he's gone, so that means two of the top positions within Disney were then open. And, well, they're filled. So first off, Josh DeAmaro is now the new chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products. Now, Josh DeAmaro was my personal hope, just off of what I know from the different potential candidates. Josh DeAmaro has to be one of the more personable people out there as a face for Disney. And from everything I've seen, he really cares about the parks, really goes ahead and cares about the cast members. And so this seems like a great promotion here. Definitely looking for good things. Now, intriguingly, Josh DeAmaro's former position was president of Walt Disney World, which he actually was only appointed to back in November of last year. That's some quick promotion right there. He came from Disneyland before that and actually has been with Disney since 1998, so a little over 20 years. And most of the positions he's held have heavily been within the Disney theme parks. So he has a lot of experience there and he's going to bring that definitely up here to the Disney parks experiences and products position. Well, I'm definitely hoping for good things from Josh De Amaro and really get some innovation in those parks and really put the money into them that they need. Here's hoping. Now, of course, he's not CEO. He's just the chairman of the Disney parks and experiences and products section. So it doesn't have full control, but definitely some influence in that spot. Here's open. Okay, what about the person taking Kevin Mayer's spot? Well, guess what? We're going to go promote from one of our other Disney parks. We just promoted Walt Disney World's president up to one position. Well, let's promote Disneyland Resort's president up to a different one. So Rebecca Campbell is now the new chairman of Direct-to-Consumer and International which means she'll be overseeing Disney+, Plus, ESPN+, Plus, and Hulu streaming, along with all of Disney's different international television channels. Now, she has tons of experience over in the television side of Disney, because before she was Disneyland president, she was president of the EMEA part of Walt Disney over in London, which means a lot of the overseas stuff, also the Disney Plus expansion out in Europe and beyond. And before that, she was president of ABC-owned television stations for seven years. So she has a ton of experience over on the TV side, which makes a lot of sense for her getting that promotion. Now, intriguingly, there was a little news story that dropped later this week that apparently the ad sales and media distribution sections will no longer be reporting to her, but actually be shifted over to the Disney media networks instead. Interesting shift. Don't know why but just a teensy little footnote to add to this. Well, and guess what? This means that we've got new positions downstream that are now open because now we have both Disneyland and Walt Disney World resorts who need precedence as well. And we filled those as well. So Walt Disney World's new president is Jeff Valle. 
Now, Jeff Valle used to be the president of Disney Signature Experiences. So that's all the cruise lines, the Vacation Club, the Adventures by Disney, Alani Resort down in Hawaii, and all of that stuff put together. Now, he's been with the company for over 30 years, so quite a while. He was over in Disney Cruise Lines during a lot of their expansion, too. So he's definitely been around for a while. I don't know exactly what to expect for Disney World from him, but we shall find out. Jumping over to the west coast of the U.S., Ken Potrock is now the new president of Disneyland Resort. Now, he used to be the president of Consumer Products, which he had been for the past couple years. But that said, he's got some definite park experience in there, too, because before that, he's had some Disney Vacation Club experience. But more specifically, he actually led the expansion and renovation of Disney Springs out over in Florida back in 2015. And he actually started his time at Disney way back as vice president of marketing over for the Disney Cruise Lines. So he's got some interesting experience sitting in there. Here's hoping and we'll look and see what happens with Disneyland over the upcoming years. And as one last quick little note, each of those two positions have now been filled as well. So we have Kareem Daniel, who's now the new president of Consumer Products, Games, and Publishing, who used to be president of Walt Disney Imagineering and Operations, Product Creation, and Publishing in Games. Whew, there's a mouthful for your position title. And then we also have Thomas Maslam, who is now the new president of Disney Signature Experiences, who comes from having been the senior vice president of Resort and Transportation Operations at the Walt Disney World Resort. So there you go. Whole bunch of new people with new positions high up inside Disney. Continuing onward, our next story is an update on the Disney parks and a couple non-Disney parks. Right off the bat, let's go ahead and note that Disney Springs reopened officially this Wednesday, May 20th. Now, it's not fully open or anything like that. Disney actually won't be opening its Disney-owned parts of it up until starting next Wednesday, here on the 27th of May. And there were definitely some people there Wednesday, but the reports say it's really lessened here as we've gotten past Wednesday, so there just aren't very many people in Disney Springs. Will that change come next Wednesday and we see things like World of Disney open up? We shall see. Meanwhile, and this is relevant, even though it's not Disney specifically, we have news about other theme parks planning to open down in Florida. Universal Orlando will be opening June 5th, so coming soon to a theater near you. And Legoland Florida is apparently looking to open June 1st, not official yet though. Now, if those two parks are opening, one can probably assume Walt Disney World won't be too far behind. Now, as an outside observer here, I have to say all of this opening down in Florida seems a little bit premature. Just a bit. We don't have widespread testing. We don't have the ability to track contacts as well to be able to track down the virus. We don't have it even under control yet, really. We don't have the proper equipment for our hospitals yet. Not to the degree to handle what might come. And if you look at Florida right now where it is, it's not where one would want it to be to be able to open like that. Yet, charging on forward. Yikes. Well, good luck. Good luck. Moving on around the world, Hong Kong Disneyland apparently has been having a soft opening test with its cast members this week. We got a little bit of report on that. Also over at Shanghai Disneyland, it continues to open some more features. We've got Captain Jack's Stunt Spectacular back open, as well as the Frozen Sing Along, and another restaurant, the Tribal Table Restaurant's open. So there you have it. A little bit more news about the Disney parks around the world here in the U.S. and elsewhere. And frankly, as far as the other parks, well, we just haven't heard much of anything new. So that's why you haven't heard anything about Disneyland yet. And Disney World hasn't put in anything for whether they'll be opening soon. There's a lot of expectations and rumors, but nothing official. We shall see what we shall see. And frankly, I'm all for the parks opening once it is safe to go ahead and do so. Frankly, for me to go visit a park, it would take one of two things. Either I know I myself am immune, so I don't have to worry about that. Or, on the flip side, we have some kind of testing thing where we can tell you that everybody that's in that park recently tested and was clear of coronavirus. One of those two. So here's looking forward to that happening someday in the future. Okay, everybody, it's time for everyone's favorite section, the lightning round. Disney Aspire has 700 new graduates here in 2020. Now that's Disney's program that pays 100% of the hourly cast member and employees tuition for whatever their in-network schools are. So congratulations to everyone who just went ahead and got their degrees. 
The new show Muppets Now has a premiere date of July 31st on Disney+. Plus. Now this first season will be a six episode unscripted season and we're going to go ahead and see it soon. The Walt Disney Company picked up 102 Daytime Emmy nominations. What a good load of nominations that is. Congratulations to all the great shows. And finally, there is a new Babarusa piglet over at Animal Kingdom. It's a baby girl and her name is Karana, which means sunbeam in Indonesian. Pretty cool. Finally, for this week's news, we end on a new section that I'm adding. And this is what's new on Disney+. Plus. Generally, Disney Plus releases movies, shows, and episodes on Fridays. So here's some of my highlights of what was released this week. First off, we have a new Spark short, and that's out. So this is Pixar's cool little shorts there, and apparently it's Pixar's first gay protagonist in any of their works. So that's pretty cool too. Then we have Zenimation. Zenimation has 10 episodes, about 5 to 7 minutes each, and it's this whole soothing ambient sounds, no other noises other than that. No music either, and they've got themes like water, locations, nature, and flight. And it just takes little pieces from all kinds of different Disney movies and weaves them in together. There's no new animation in it. Now, there's largely not new sounds, but sometimes they did need to add some sounds to make it work. Otherwise, they just removed all the extraneous noise and music and talking or whatever else was in there. Go check it out. It's pretty cool. Fantastic Mr. Fox is now up on Disney+. Plus. As Disney Plus keeps adding new movies up to the streaming service. And if you haven't seen that one, definitely go watch it. That's a good movie. It's, wow, it's over a decade old now. It's 2009, actually. Good old Wes Anderson stop motion. It's got George Clooney, Meryl Streep. Yeah, it, and it's, it's a riot. It's great. One Day at Disney has added yet another new episode. This time it's Ed Fritz, who was an Imagineer who worked heavily on Flight of Passage. So go take a check into that. And finally, for my highlights for new Disney Plus stuff, we've got the latest Disney gallery, The Mandalorian. So that's the documentary that looks into The Mandalorian and the making of it. This is episode four, Technology. And that's on the volume, as they call it, which is a really, really cool new technology. I mean, this is going to revolutionize how filmmaking is done for TV shows, heck, and movies, too. Definitely, if you're interested, take a look. And I've done a video on it, so you can click and see my video on it, too. And hey, I geek out on technology, so this was a cool one. And hey, guess what, everybody? That is it. That's the news for the week. Did I miss any big Disney news stories? Let me know. And hey, what do you think about these new executives? Do you think it's a great, big, beautiful day tomorrow? It's a great, big, beautiful day tomorrow. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> let me know down below in the comments. And thanks for watching. If you like the video, you know what to do. Give it a like, share it with your friends, and don't forget to click that subscribe button, of course. And I'll be back again tomorrow with another new video for Freeform Disney. Have a magical day, and may the force be with you. Always.